What's up everybody, welcome back, uh, welcome back to the new video. I hope you guys are well. I'm absolutely fantastic, thank you for asking. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about my blood work. Uh, yes, we're gonna break down my blood work. I'm gonna give you like what I know, I'm gonna give you my experiences, I'm gonna basically break down these blood works as I, was, as I was breaking down a client or someone like that. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna read these and gonna tell me all sorts of nasty things, so to you guys, just don't. <laughs> uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in this stuff. I, I feel like I understand blood work pretty well. Um, I, I'm obviously open to opinions and whatnot, but you know, ultimately this is, these are my decisions and, and, and the way I'm interpreting things. So let's look at my blood work after four months on blast and 17 weeks of dieting or 18 weeks of dieting. So 18 weeks on blast, 18 weeks of dieting. And we are currently, I think I took these eight weeks post that and this is pre-blast. So now we'll literally just go in order here, starting at red blood cells, and we'll work our, all the way down to our prostate here that you can see on the screen. Now you can see lots of greens and lots of reds. Now, the good thing about this service that I use by Medichex is that they provide doctor's notes. They provide like pretty clear inside range, outside range, borderline, etc. You can get a lot out of these. If you guys wanna use Medichex, they operate in the UK, I think solely in the UK, but you can use code Josh Bridgman, Bridgman without the E, or discount across their whole Whole website and I've worked with these guys for literally like four years maybe uh, we've worked together so if you guys ever want to get blood work done I highly suggest you do um, if you are assisted user and if you're not maybe 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 less often maybe once a year but if you're assisted you should be getting these things done regularly to know where you are doing especially if you're cycling so we'll start at the top red blood cell now for me my red blood cells in two that in, in well early like pre-blast in February um, I was actually up towards 190 in my hemoglobin um, so actually what I'll do is I'll flick over here and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show you these ones. So these are my blood results from, from February and we're going to compare. So you can see hematocrit was a little bit high, obviously with hemoglobin being a little bit high. 191, I, ideally I'd want to go get blood donated right here. But instead, um, I actually just implemented a few things to try and bring my natural levels down. And obviously it worked because I didn't have any issues throughout. Um, but you can see that here, 178, so only eight points above. And hematocrit only six, you know, 0 0.056 um, above the the recommended the recommended uh, results here. So I'm pretty happy with that considering like my blood my blood work clean come down. Um, I've been off blast obviously on TRT for the last eight weeks, um, but I put on a lot of body weight, so I wouldn't have expected that to drop so much. But it, it's pretty decent. It's something that I will keep an eye on. I will donate blood if I need to. And for those of you guys asking. Um, I bloodlet privately, so I don't go to the NHS or anything. Um, then you're going to see MCV, which is a few points over. Uh, again, I'm not too worried. Anything that's in range or, or, or just about in range, you've got to consider that we're bodybuilders, or I am a bodybuilder. I'm, you know, I'm not the average human. I'm, I'm, I'm using PEDs. I'm, I'm bigger than normal people. Like I break down more muscle than than the normal people. So there's going to be a few skews that are naturally going to be there. So. Red blood cells, I'm fine with those. White blood cells, all green. So I'm obviously healthy. I've not had any recent infections, uh, which is good to know. And then clotting status. So basically just measures your your likelihood of blood clots, for example. Uh, but again, we're both in the green on both of those. So I can briefly go over those or, or, or briefly or swiftly move past those. Kidney health. Now, kidney health is always a big one for me. Those of you guys who have followed my blood work uh, videos, you'll see that at one point I was like stage three kidney disease. It was actually like 53 points or even less. I think it was 49 points, uh, which is brutal. Um, but, you know, and actually I was very, very scared about it. But my coach, um, who was very, very well versed, you know, proceeded to, to enlighten me on the actual calculation they do. And obviously they take into your age, gender, things like that. They also take into account this creatinine level here. So I'm 114 uh, UML per liter, so I'm a little bit over the, the range. You know, naturally creatinine, if you're taking creatine, if you're bigger, if you're eating a lot of meat, you know, if you break down a lot of muscle, naturally those things are going to be a little bit higher. EGFR isn't necessarily the best checked for your kidneys. I would recommend getting a statin C or I'd recommend getting something like a little urine out of, out of the intestine would probably help a little bit as well. But a statin C will be your go-to, especially when you're dealing with bodybuilders whose creatinine levels will be all over the place, <laughs> skewing, skewing EGFR. So I've gone from stage three kidney disease to having a healthy kidney and got, I've gone on blast. So if we, you know, click... I've gone up five points since the last time I did it. So if I click back to February's, uh, you can see here, my EGFR was 51.5, which is stage three kidney disease. But you can also see my creatinine is super, super high, um, naturally, because I break down a lot of muscle. So I've gone from 51 points, which is stage three kidney disease, to 69 points, and I've blast, and I've pushed my body. So they're just, you can take EGFR with a pinch of salt. 
or you can use it as a as a as a go to point to investigate further. Now, liver health. Uh, for me, my, my liver health here like is is pretty high. Uh, my liver marker is actually pretty high here. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why it's so high. I think the only thing I can, can consider and something that I 100% should not have done but did stupidly was I went out and I drank the night before. So I drank like two cocktails the night before um, and I had a really high fat meal. So of course, what are the two things that get affected by, what are the things that get affected? Kidney markers get affected, liver markers get affected by alcohol, cholesterol status gets affected by, you know, eating a lot of food. So I should not have done that and I'm gonna have to recheck all of these things in a few weeks um, when I've got a blank canvas. That's a little bit silly of me. So, you know, if I'm honest, like, I'm not happy with this, with this liver enzyme marker here. I will get this retested in four weeks once I've been on cycle for a little bit. Yeah, I know, I understand that I'm, I'm pushing things when I've got markers in the red. That's, that's my decision. For me, like a liver is very, very resilient. I've had high markers and then I've had really low markers a few weeks later. Um, so if there's one, I hate to say this, but there's one organ that can take it, it is the liver. Doesn't mean you should hammer it. Um, but I've got a sneaky feeling that alcohol probably had a, a small a small input on here, which is definitely my fault. Um, and then we can move on to proteins. So, you know, albumin, um, SHBG, both of these things are slightly off. Um, which is which is you know something to consider. So as we go over uh, proteins, total proteins in it is it is it a good place? Maybe slightly on the higher side. Um, albumin uh, again slightly on the higher side, but I'm not too worried. It is it's one or two points over or three points over here? Globulin is in a fine place, just a little bit over that bottom marker, and then uh, SHBG sex hormone binding globulin is is a little bit low as well. Um, but that's to be expected with with the use of steroids that I've had and having. Uh, now diabetes risk. This basically takes a snapshot of like the last 90 days. Um, and, and where it is. So 36 for me, if I'm honest, is pretty high. It's pretty high. Like, you know, 42 is 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 is, is pre-diabetic. So uh, we've got to be a little bit conscious of where that is. I do use metformin at the moment to try and bring that down. I actually didn't use metformin for the whole of my prep, but I was using uh, growth hormone for a decent part of it. So obviously growth hormone will push that HbA1c up. Um, and I've been using growth hormone, growth hormone as part of my TRT protocol. Um, so I could recover for one, so I could recover better for my surgery, but two, so I can keep my muscle mass. So, and I wasn't using metformin during that time, so I can see why this is a little bit higher, um, and that's something to note for the future. Uh, now, cholesterol status. Now, this is brutal. Um, cholesterol status. Like, look how many reds there are here. Uh, now, total cholesterol is only just over, um, which for me, I guess I'm, I'm I'm happy with the total cholesterol, but let's be real, guys. These are not good markers, and I I I, I wonder whether I would have had a lot more in the green if. Uh, I hadn't had that huge meal. Like I literally had like some stupid like oily kebab meal and it was just so, so stupid. So I don't want to say I'm happy with these results, but I'm happy they're not way, way, way off the charts. But for me, like I need to address this total cholesterol, get it down into the good markers. I need to address my LDL cholesterol. I'll probably be bringing in something like red, red rice yeast extract, red yeast rice extract that helps modulate uh, LDL a little bit, as long as, as long as metformin a little bit. Uh, Non-HDL cholesterol, uh, again, that's a little bit high for me. I, I wanna keep that down into the, into the threes, if not the twos. Um, and then HDL cholesterol, naturally, uh, HDL cholesterol is gonna be a little bit low on people who cycle, specifically me when I was natural. Um, I only had one MML per liter. So if I get close to one MML while using, I'm somewhat happy, if I'm honest. Like 0 0.8 is not great. I'd much rather see that above one. And then of course, like the total cholesterol to HDL ratio, 6.8 four uh when it should be four like that it's way off the charts and that's something that i really want to consider um going forward um that's definitely not improved and and, and i gotta consider that i went from post show eight weeks if i'm brutally honest i ate shit and that's the reality of it i did eat shit i didn't eat i say eat shit like 50 percent of my meals every day was was an order out because i had been dieting for so long i wanted to eat some good food um and 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 this is the repercussions this is the repercussions on my blood work my cholesterol is way off and that's something that i need to consider and probably address so i'm going to put some a lot more fish oil a lot more healthy foods in a lot less saturated fats a lot less uh, just awful fats that just have you know really just non-nutritional value um, and we're going to retest these again in four or five weeks and see if we can alter them Moving on to the final few now, so gout risk, nothing is, um, I'm always pretty low on here, I guess it's pretty high actually, but I'm not too worried about uh, gout risk here. Then we've got muscle health, so creatine kinase. Now creatine kinase is always gonna be relatively off the charts for bodybuilders. The muscle breakdown is, is, is always gonna be high. Um, I've had like markers above a thousand before. This is only seven, seven, nine. Obviously it's way high off the charts, uh, but to be expected with heavy exercise, heavy protein diet, and uh, a lot of muscle breakdown, so. Um, 
yeah, not, not too worried about muscle health. Iron status, all good. Everything is in range. Uh, I'm not too worried about where all of these are. Um, I've had some of these out of whack before, but they seem to regulate themselves pretty well. Thyroid hormone. So my thyroid is pretty darn good. Like my three, ty my three T3, three thyroxine. I mean, maybe my three thyroxine is a little bit low, but three T3 is really high. TSH yeah, is, is all right as well. We've got to consider that literally four weeks before this test, I was still using exogenous thyroid at a TRT, uh, a HRT dose, 25 micrograms of T3, 100 micrograms of T4. So that was four weeks ago. Um, so you can see how quickly the thyroid hormone comes back if you if you dose yourself appropriately finally hormones um so obviously crushed fsh, FSH crushed lh because i'm using exogenous hormone uh, estrogen nice and high testosterone you know mid 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 to high range um probably what probably tells me that my 150 meg of testosterone that i was using is probably potentially a slightly underdosed uh usually like a a hundred percent 150 milligram TRT should take you probably a little bit above this 30, 30, 31 nanomole per liter. With estrogen in a good place, testosterone in a good place, I'm not too worried. Uh, free testosterone, obviously going to be slightly high. Prolactin is a little bit high here as well. So that's something that I will address. I'll most likely, um, I'll most likely put some active form of B6, P5P in or supplement B6 as well to try and modulate that. And I'll retest prolactin again in four or five weeks. So, uh, and then finally prostate you know, and, and we're all good there. So that is a good look at my entire blood work. Um, things to note, it's not perfect. Things to note, there's a lot of work to do. Things to note, I will be retesting again in four or five weeks with, you know, actively correcting some things to try and increase and improve these numbers. But guess what? Some people just don't do that. Some people don't even look at this stuff. Some people you know, and look how bad mine is. Okay, it's not the worst that you've probably ever seen, but mine's not great. And 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 I can see it, and I can adjust what I want to do. But some people don't even look at it, which is mental to me. So, please, please, please get your blood work done. Check out MediChecks. Um, get it done. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Enjoyed this breakdown of my blood work after using steroids. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. We'll see you very soon. Peace and love, everybody.